Here we go again. These are the games that I played in June and July. So this one's not new in the slightest. I've been playing Slay the Spire on several different platforms since 2020, mostly on Xbox, but over the years I moved to my phone. I love this game, always have, and it was an instant classic for a reason. But I've never finished a run. I don't know what it is about Slay the Spire's deck building, but I've always found it pretty obtuse. Until, on and after a flight to Chicago in June, I finally finished a run. Standing next to baggage claim, waiting on an Uber to the hotel, I finally did it. I'm really excited to play The Watcher for the first time. I'm a caricature of myself here. This is the worst kind of silly mobile game. You're literally just managing a store that sells cards. That's it. There's no card game involved. It's a not quite idle game where the numbers go up. But it's a good time waster, and that's why I keep going back to it. I won't spend too much time on this one, but this season of Marvel Snap has been a blast. The balance feels good for now. No deck is extremely dominant in the meta. Climbing the ladder has been fun and not at all stressful. And yet, the game has introduced another $100 bundle and a rather confusing spotlight cash system for acquiring newer cards. I actually keep up with the leaks and understand the system, so it's working for me better than the old way. But if you don't do that, the system doesn't feel better. I opened way too many spotlight caches before realizing that I should have saved them. But hey, I made it to Omega rank finally. Maybe one day we'll get casual mode. Again, Forward is not a new game for me, but it's a simple little roguelike that I didn't really get the first few times that I played it. I downloaded it again just to have something else to play on my phone other than Snap and Magic Arena, and it's been a real joy after I paid attention to its systems and its item mechanics. I never got Gwent. I never played The Witcher, but I tried Rogue Mage and the online multiplayer version of Gwent, and it didn't click with me. I understood the basic rules, but why the game was fun beyond that didn't make any sense. Thronebreaker made me get Gwent, but I still don't want to keep playing it. There's just rarely anything interesting to me about a generic fantasy setting, and despite really loving a story tied to a strategic card game, this one's not for me. Domekeeper is a simple little roguelike that mixes exploration, resource management, and light combat. It's a good time, and despite its simple loop, I played several rounds in my first session with the game. Sometimes a game just nails that loop without doing too much, and Domekeeper sure is one of those. I didn't expect this one to hit like it did. Kingdom 80s is the latest in the Kingdom series of games. It is what it says it is. It's an 80s-themed Kingdom game. I understand that Stranger Things has claimed ownership of all 80s themed media at this point, but even then, Kingdom 80s doesn't really try to differentiate itself from that. It's about these weird alien-like things invading various locations in this 80s era suburban town. The gameplay though is really fun in a numbers go up kind of way. Also there's a bit of puzzle solving here which I found to be really fun, but just enough without adding too much to the game. That all said, the story in this game is so bad that it really shouldn't be there. It's doing way too much and trying way too hard and none of it lands. The best thing I can say is that it doesn't take away from the great gameplay. The fuck guys, grapple dog rules? The grapple mechanic is the coolest thing I've seen in a platformer since Celeste and the music absolutely slaps. You should go play grapple dog. I love a vertical shoot 'em up in the style of Raiden. I've played so much Skyforce Reloaded over the years, even though I quit playing because I lost all my progress when I switched to iPhone in 2018. Rival Mega Gun looked like it could give me that kind of fun, and it might have if it wasn't so dang hard. Boy, I wish that I enjoyed games like these because this might be the best of them. I just. Pokemon is the only turn-based RPG that I've really ever enjoyed where the combat doesn't go beyond picking one of a set of moves. And even then, I quit playing Pokemon Violet because its combat felt so slow. Hell, Fantasia at least gave me the touch-based arc abilities, and Tactum's games give me strategy and movement. I don't think I'm going to get very far in Chained Echoes, but I can see that it's a game worth playing. I feel like this might get my channel deleted, but... I seriously wish that I enjoyed games like these because this might be the best of them. I'm about a third into Chrono Trigger. I've been trying to play it since Into the Aether did a bonus on it in January of 2022, and I don't think I can do it. I'm sure that I'd love the story presented to me in a different fashion, but this isn't the one that's going to get me. 
Holy shit. I had no idea what to expect when I downloaded this game. I knew the original Ridiculous Fishing was a classic from the time the App Store originally launched. I knew it was a big deal that this updated version was being released. But I had no idea that I'd be dodging fish with the accelerometer on the way down, catching fish with my accelerometer on the way up, and then shooting the fish to collect money. What a goofy, silly, perfect game. I mentioned Planet of Lana in my Indie Games video, and I played it when I hit Game Pass. It's not for me. We actually own Final Fantasy 16. it's just that my husband is playing it right now. But the demo ruled. As you might understand, I've never found a Final Fantasy that worked for me, what with the series being primarily turn-based up to now. I did enjoy a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake, but ultimately I found it expanded a lot on what were apparently just passing moments in the original game. That led to a lot of filler, and it just wasn't fun for me. But Final Fantasy XVI is going hard from the jump, and it's really interesting to play and has a story that more than keeps my interest. I can't wait to pick it back up. Since my last video, I have finished Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and I'm mixed on it. That said, I have a lot of feelings about Cal, Star Wars more generally, and how the Jedi in this game are represented versus the Jedi in the movies. I'll probably do a full video on this one. And surprise, here's a few games that I'm excited to play. I have a hunch that Viewfinder is going to be a whole video and might even be the game this year that makes me scream at people to play it. Spider-Man 2 and Starfield are of course huge releases on my list and I will be playing them. Spider-Man 2 in particular, I'll be dedicating time for. I know, Cassette Beast is a turn-based RPG in the style of Pokemon. I am not sure that I'm gonna love it, but it's on Game Pass and I hear way too many good things not to try it. Again, Exoprimal's on Game Pass and I'm hearing too many good things, but also the premise is bonkers. I have never played a Metal Gear Solid game. What I know about Metal Gear Solid is that there's a lot of meta stuff going on, and that's the stuff that I tend to love in a narrative. I'm not sold on the military part of it all, but it's worth a shot. And hey, if you want to hear more about this, you might subscribe to the podcast that I started with my friend AC recently. It's called Can't Let It Go, and you can find links to it at can'tletitgo.gay. I am so excited for Persona 5 Tactica. I've been looking for a way into Persona for a while, and this feels like the perfect one. I would love to finish Persona 5 Royal beforehand, of course, but again, that's a turn-based RPG, and it's super long. That said, P5R and Cassette Beasts are probably the next two games I'm going to play, and I kind of can't wait. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like on YouTube and send it to a friend. I'll see you all next time.